Hello fellow readers, today I'm going to be discussing the novel Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? Uh, this one is written by Fujino Omoroi and it had illustrations by Suzuhito Yasuda. Now this is a Japanese light novel originally. It has been translated this the official release by Yen On. And they do have at least two more of these books, two more volumes on the books for April and then in August. So volumes two and three are already slated for release. The story focuses on our protagonist who is named Bell Canal. He's a farm boy and when his grandfather passes away he has no family so he decides to head into the major city of Orario. And what makes this city unique is that it is actually built on top of a dungeon, a massive dungeon that goes down many, many floors, that's filled with monsters. And by entering the dungeon and killing the monsters and collecting their crystal hearts, somebody can get paid. You become an adventurer. And so that's what Bell decides he's going to do. He's going to go into the dungeon and become a powerful adventurer. And as a side sort of quest, He's looking to meet beautiful girls. Now the book is actually kind of cool. It's written in a mixture of first person and third person. When Bell, the main protagonist of the series, is the point of view character, the novel's written in first person in his voice. And when it focuses on other side characters as point of view characters, the novel's written in third person. I actually really enjoyed this. I liked kind of the breaking up of voices. I thought it was cool that we got that sort of more intimate voice of the protagonist when it is first person, but at the same time we were able to shift to other points of view and sort of have a broader view of the world in a larger scope by focusing on these other side characters as well. The world building in this is probably the main feature. It is kind of cool how the author has taken RPG tropes like Characters who are leveling up as they gain experience and focus on their skills and so forth. And also on the whole idea of how monsters continuously spawn within a dungeon and so forth. He's taken those things that we take for granted as gamers and created this fantasy world where those things make sense. And that they are very specific for this world and they help build the whole mythos of the world itself. So in that way it was kind of cool because you did see this world kind of using all of those gamer type things that we're used to, but making them make sense in terms of an actual living world. This first novel is very much an origin story, and not just for Bell himself and the other sort of minor characters, secondary characters around him, but also for the world itself. It sets up the rules of the world, and like I said, it tells us how it is that adventurers level up, how it is that they become stronger, how they survive these battles with these monsters to varying levels. It gives you all of that setting, which is so important for everything else and how it makes sense. And really, we don't have a clear-cut antagonist until later on in the novel. And even then, I wouldn't say the person is specifically an antagonist, but they just cause some bad things to happen. In short, the novel is more about Belle's journey in terms of going from an absolute newbie to starting to develop some skills as well as some confidence in himself. So we have an actual real growth of the character from the beginning of the novel and to the end of the novel. And not just himself, but even his relationships with some of the other existing characters. So it's a really fun read, very easy, light reading. It's only about 225 pages. There's one or two wonky things for the translation. I mean, you'll get it when you're reading the... you get it. You figure out what they meant to say, but they use sometimes the odd word. The other thing that I'd like to comment about this, and I don't know if it's sort of endemic of all light novels, but what I notice is, is that there are not a lot of speech tags used to clarify who is actually speaking. You can have a number of sort of lines written of dialogue, and it's not always clear who's speaking, particularly when the author does things like he'll have two lines of sound effects, like glarg and ah oh, and all that kind of stuff. 
And you're not sure, like, is that Bell making the first noise, or is that him making the second noise? Is that the monster making one of the noises? Like, it's it's just not clear all the time. And I don't know if that's sort of a, a Japanese-style thing, or whether that's just his particular style. I'm not too sure. But I have noticed it in a few other light novels as well, that speech tags don't seem to be as prevalent as they are in North American books. But it's still pretty easy to read, and, uh, you know, you can sort it all out. It just, there's the odd time where I kind of had to read something once or twice and go, oh, that's who's saying those lines. Other than that, fun read, fun world, looking forward to Volume 2. I recommend it, especially if you're a fan of the more comedic-type fantasy anime. It's got tons of that stuff in it. You'll totally feel at home reading a novel like this. I really do recommend it, and it'll be interesting to see because there is actually an anime being made of this particular light novel series that's supposed to be premiering in the spring anime season. So, is it wrong to try and pick up girls in a dungeon? I do give it a thumbs up. I do recommend it, especially, like I said, if you're an anime fan. Check it out, and thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked the video, click on subscribe. Until then, Take care, and I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye for now.